Hey guys, how are you all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic, and welcome back to the channel. And today, if you guys, this is another Ninjago video. Now, uh, I don't know where this is going to be at the time of recording. I probably have the reactions out for the new United Dragons Rising 2023 show of Ninjago coming out this year. I believe June 1st, uh, and uh, we're in at least U.S. And, uh, you know, we got some stuff, we got like a weird dreams thing, it, it, I don't know, it's a whole thing. But uh, we are finally back to covering the Ninjago uh, Quest for the Lost Powers uh, book. Now, a uh, quick disclaimer, if you have not read the book, I don't, I, you know, I would advise you to read it. I got it for around 12 bucks. It's, you know, about almost 200 pages. It's a good book from what I've read so far. And uh, also another, you know, quick spoiler warning, if you have not seen Up to Ninjago Crystallized, which is essentially the entire Ninjago show from season 1 to season 15. Uh, this is canon, and this takes place after season 15. So if you haven't seen Crystallized, Nanny and Poppy, drop your like. Leave till you see it, alright? We're working on season 8 right now, all of us. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's great. You guys know season 8 is my favorite. But, uh, again, if you, don't, if you don't care about spoilers, whatever. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to be covering the Zane book, which is uh, the first one here. The second one, excuse me, the first one was Kai. Uh, sorry this took so long, it's just been hard. I couldn't I couldn't actually find the book for, for a few days, uh, but I found it, and here we are. So anyway, uh, just like the first one, I'm not going to read you the entire thing, of course, but uh, I'm going to kind of go over it in a little bit, show the pictures, all that fun stuff. So if you like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and let's, let's do this. All right, uh, chapter one, looking for clues. Now this is, uh, Kai's was a little different than, you know, story-wise, of course, but, you know, Zane does lose his powers. He's trying to get him back with Pixel and all that in Samurai X Cave, Samurai X Cave. And uh, from there, it's just kind of Zane just kind of talking like, you know, oh, you know, he's kind of having the shame and burden of becoming the Ice Emperor, right, from Season 11, um, the, the Ice Chapter. And uh, we get some really cool pictures of Zane and, and Pixel trying to help him and all that. And she, Pixel's like, stay still. He's like, no, you know, what, what's wrong with me? And uh, Cole, or excuse me, uh, Zane is basically just trying to find out what the fudge is wrong with him. You know, why was he a genocidal murderer? For like, uh, uh, I don't know, hundreds of years or whatever it was in, in you know, that, that time in the Never Realm. So, it's actually kind of cool that we're getting that. Because, you know, season 15, they touched on the, the Ice Emperor. He came back. Wasn't, for some reason, voiced by the same guy. It was just evil Brent Miller, I guess. And uh, it was more or less played for jokes. You know, I mean, this is really the meat and potatoes of that story, which I think is actually pretty cool. Uh, so, basically, they're trying to find their true potential again. And Zane's trying to unlock his powers. And to do that... Uh, basically, they have to go into Zane's memory banks, and Zane is trying to kind of relive different aspects of his life and kind of figure out what went wrong and how we can get his powers back and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that is essentially chapter one. Chapter two is called The Face of Fear, and this is basically where, uh, from season four Tournament of Elements, yeah, where uh, basically, you know, Zane falls into that giant effing ice cave when he's titanium and all that after he rebuilds himself, and uh, he, he has to fight, you know, face this ice dragon, and he's like, I'm... I'm not the white ninja, you know, that kind of thing. And Pixel's like, who are you then? And he says, I am the titanium ninja. So he gets, like, a new identity. And uh, I think that's kind of cool. I think it's a great arc in that in that season, uh, season four. But uh, in this, you know, I'm going to be dead honest with you guys. This is a good story. It's a good message, right? It, it's Zane trying to figure out where what, what he went wrong and all that kind of stuff. I, I get that. But a lot of this, uh, you know, book of Zane, it's definitely more, I don't want to say mature, but compared to the Kai one, it's just tonally different, which I'm not saying Kai's is bad and Zane's is good. It's just different in tone. That's good, right? They're, they're different. But at the same time, uh, this one does kind of tread on familiar ground where it's like, ah, you know, we're, we, you know, with this, for example, with season four, the ice dragon and the ice cave, we've seen that in season four. You know what I mean? So it's, we're taking all these pages, like four or five pages to, you know, kind of go into that and just kind of relive that and basically, you know, Zane befriends it and all that. Yada, yada, face this fear. It, it's, it's good stuff, but again, it does kind of seem a bit like filler. Chapter 3, back to the beginning, we see a little uh, um, image of there's Zane trying to kind of um, figure out what's going on, you know, what, what's happening here. Uh, Pixel's asking, would you like to try again? And he has to go back to, um, you know, basically where it all began uh, with him kind of meditating, um, you know, in the water, that kind of where he used to do that, in the pilot, the season 1 and all that. Uh, he just tries to meditate, he tries to leave, and this is actually where he uh, basically leaves the cave and goes to that, you know, water and he just kind of meditates on himself. Um, so right now he's not living a memory, right? He's just kind of, he's, he's breaking off. And then for some reason, he gets another uh, memory of, of course, where uh, Zane, uh, his father, Dr. Julian, dies. Uh, for the, he technically does die. 
except Samakai, as we know, Samakai brings him back with a with a T or whatever. Um, he does die eventually of old age, just natural causes. This is like his first death type of thing, and that's of course you know where he, when he flips Zane's memory switch, all that, and you know all that happens uh, in season one, and then we kind of you know relive that memory. Zane's trying to kind of say no, don't do it. He's yelling. He's trying to you know um, almost like you know interact with himself, even though he it's like. It's like a ghost of Christmas past, I guess, you know, like the Christmas Carol thing where, you know, Ebegeger, Uyghur, or whatever his name is, uh, he tries to do a Scrooge or whatever. He tries to, you know, oh, don't do that. You know, it's like in a horror movie where you're like, don't go in the room, you freaking idiot. And he goes in the room. It's like that. They can't hear you, but he's still trying to, you know, make sense of it. Um, so, yeah, uh, the chapter three ends with um, Zane asking the question, what would happen if Dr. Julian had not turned off my memory switch? He wondered, would my life have turned out differently? So he's kind of, he's doing a little bit of soul searching. You know, I think that's kind of cool. Chapter 4 in Icy History. This is where it gets really, really in there. Of course, there's a little image of Zane uh, skating or whatever, or ice shredding, whatever, with a, um, a birchwood forest thing. Treehorn, that's right, treehorn. Uh, so Zane is just kind of doing this. Uh, and then that's, of course, when he uh, finds the... Of course, the very controversial Ice Emperor stuff. And uh, basically, Zane's just going throughout his day. Uh, and then after that, he essentially is like, hey, what's going on here? And, uh, you know, Memory Zane. So they kind of say, like, there's Memory Zane and then there's Zane. So whenever they say Memory Zane in this story, it's, you know, past Zane type thing. And normal Zane is just Zane. Um, so he saves the family from a tree order and all that. And then after that, he uh, basically wakes up again, and he's just kind of go, he's kind of like tripping out, you know, because of the memory switch he hit and all that, and uh, he goes to the Ice Emperor, which is really cool, so saves the family, and then he has to relive uh, probably the worst time in his entire life, and uh, it's just, it's a freaking shame that they didn't do this more in the actual show, but I'm glad they got to here, you know what I mean, it's like Star Wars, you know, whatever they don't tell you in the movies, they tell you in a comic or a novel, and it just, you know, some people say that's cheap, in my opinion, it helps build the world better than just, you know, oh, we didn't know, so we wrote it in a book, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it makes more sense if you put it in a story, because, you know, yeah, you have to pay to know what's going on. It's like DLC, I guess, but, you know, it's all good, if you like the franchise. Uh, so uh, Zane freaks the F out. He's like, Pixel, get me out of this memory, he yells, and he's freaking out. Um, and then Chapter 5, Forgiveness. Here we go, last one. Uh, as you can tell, you know, the Kai one definitely had a lot more stuff going on. This is, again, a lot of this is Zane going back in time. You know, mem him and memory Zane, right? Zane is looking at a, a past version of himself, trying to kind of reconcile and, and do the soul searching and all that. And this is where the meat and potatoes, the juicy stuff comes in, uh, where Zane is basically with memory Zane, which is, of course, the Ice Emperor, which we know is Zane. Uh, and Pixel just kind of reminds him, hey, uh, you know, Zane's like, I am reluctant to face the... I am reluctant to face myself as the Ice Emperor. I don't know, I gotta work on it. And then Pixel says, the Ice Emperor can't hurt you inside of memory, you, you dummy. And he says, no, that this isn't... I'm not worried that it'll hurt me. It's difficult to describe, but I think it has something to do with the terrible things I did when I was the Ice Emperor. That is not something I allow myself to think about often. So it's not like he's scared of him attacking him physically. He's scared of the memories that, you know, he's scared of basically himself. It's deep, it's metaphorical, it's metaphological, it's it's all the, the metaphorical, it's all the meta words. And, uh, you know, the Ice Emperor just kind of, you know, says, you know, they must be punished. And, you know, he attacks everyone. Uh, General Vex, of course, we know him, he's in, uh, he's kind of like Klaus, I guess, but not as magical, I guess, with the, with the, the whatever, who's on, who's on, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, from there we get Vex kind of, you know, basically as we saw in, in the Ice chapter, Vex is kind of like his right-hand man, right? as I said, uh, Klaus to Chen. And uh, Vex is kind of like, hey, these guys effed up. You can't just let them go, you got to punish them. And the Ice Emperor, because Zane got his memory wiped, you know, he's kind of more susceptible to, you know, oh, this guy knows he knows what the hell's going on. I better follow what he's doing, you know? So it, it's you got to watch the actual thing, and I hope you did before you watch this, of course, because you're going to be totally freaking lost. You haven't seen the show, but uh, I think it's really cool that you know it's 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 very much a case that it's it's different, you know, because in in the actual season, Lloyd faces Zane, right, the Ice Emperor, and he kind of has his heart to heart and all that, and it kind of like triggers his memory where you know I think Lloyd says it when he's like you know you were built to protect those that cannot protect yourself. And then that triggers Zane to be like, oh, wow, you know, he accesses computer memory and all that. And that's a really good, I don't want to say shot, but it's a good uh, picture of uh, Zane with, of course, um, 
you know, the Ice Emperor version of himself. And it's cool, you know, it's like a, uh, uh, it's like that scene from that Garmanon comic where, like, Lord Garmanon is, like, you know, meta metaphorically, of course, you know, it's like in his mind or whatever. He's talking to young Garmanon, you know, young himself when he was a kid before, I think it was before he got bitten by the Great Devourer. So, you know, it's kind of cool that they can do that kind of stuff. And actually, you know, for a kid reading this, again, you know my opinion. I don't think Ninjago is a kid show. I don't think a little kid should be watching it. Um, in fact, uh, my, my parents hardly understand the lore. Nanny and Poppy, they're doing a good job. You guys are doing good. But uh, Mom and Dad were like, what the hell's going on? You know, so it's uh, it's kind of funny. But, um, yeah, they, they get it. It's cool. But uh, I don't know. For, for like, a, an 8-year-old to read this, I think they get it. I don't know. I, I'm not saying I was I was a dumb kid. I wasn't, but um, I mean maybe a little. But it wasn't. I wasn't reading this. And I was like, what's going on? You know, what I mean, like I, I was like, oh okay, you know, I, I can get it. But it, it, for me, like you know, as a 24 year old reading this stuff, it, it hits. You know, what I mean, it's just it's good writing for sure. Um, so basically, uh, the way they kind of handled this is. Uh, Zane and him are trying to, you know, uh, uh, you know, kind of dash it out and duke it out, and uh, you know, Vex is like, they defy you. It will begin with fish, and it will end with your doom. Do you want that? You know, it's just like these these public outcries and these town squabbles and all that. And then we get Zane trying to kind of, you know, snap him out of it. Hey, you got to snap out of this. This ain't you. You got you. You know, you protect others. You do not harm them. Uh, and then, uh, of course, um, the Ice Emperor says, "Protect those who cannot protect themselves." And then from that. That kind of triggers the memory of the Ice Emperor, and then Zane uh, is essentially back to being in a self-conscious state, and he says, you know, this is not a memory, this is you fighting yourself, so this is real now, in essence. Uh, and Zane essentially walks over to him, and he says, uh, what does he say? He says, a feeling of calmness, I'm trying not to read the whole thing, a feeling of calmness flowed through Zane, he knew what he was supposed to do. Uh, Zane walked over to the Ice Emperor's cruel eyes, looked him in the eyes, and said, I forgive you. At the words, icy blue light swept through Zane's body. He felt the elemental power of ice surge through his being, uh, the ice shards paying into the floor, and he said, you cannot hurt me anymore, me or anyone else. So, the reason uh, why Zane was able to defeat the Ice Emperor, not only, like, it's not like the Ice Emperor came back, you know, it's like all in his head type thing. But it, it's a way for Zane to not only gain his ice powers back, it's a way for him to kind of reconcile with himself, forgive himself, forgive the past version of himself. You know, because realistically, yes, the Ice Emperor, evil Zane, did commit genocide. He did kill people. He was a dictator. He was he was a bad guy. And, uh, you know, how do you, how do you live with that? You know, how do you live with that? in your mind that I was a murderer and that I was a genocidal maniac and that I was I was this and I was that. Um, so Zane, like in real life, you know, if you really want to come to who you are and forgive yourself, the best option is to forgive yourself, you know what I mean? So once he does that, he comes to peace with himself and uh, Pixel says, hey, I'm glad this worked, but I'm afraid that it'll be too dangerous to share this program with the others and just kind of, you know, give it out. And uh, Zane says, I am sure that Cole, uh, Jay, and Kai will find their own ways to regain their powers. We have many different to learn, but one uh, thing that we all know is that a ninja never quits. So that's how it ends. Zane finally figures out his true potential again, or I guess gets his powers back, and is able to live on knowing that he, you know, accepting that he did do those horrible things, but he forgives himself and he's ready to move on. You know what I mean? I mean, this is deep shit. You know, I mean? it's like Luke in The Last Jedi type of thing. You know, maybe not as deep as that, but it's the same type of thing. You know, you mucked up. You gotta forgive yourself, you gotta acknowledge that you mucked up, and then you gotta forgive, you know, others that are around you or whatever, as well as yourself, so that you can fully, you know, reconcile with yourself as, you know, what you did, and then be able to move past that without, <clears throat> you know, I guess harming yourself, I almost choked on nothing. And, um, I really think that it's a good metaphorical story, it's very deep, very, uh, not a whole lot of comedy like the first Kai one, you know, which, again, it's good, it's good, it's different type stuff, you know. But, uh, we got two more here, we got Cole, my favorite, which is gonna be next, I have not read this yet, so... I have deliberately been putting this off for about two weeks now, or two or three weeks. I'm, I'm trying. I really want to freaking read it because I could do the Cole voice. So I'm trying to re read this in my Cole voice. But uh, I'm very much excited to read Cole's, and I believe Jay's uh, is last. And then that is it for this book. But yeah, I'm very excited to get to the other two stories. Tell me in the comments down below what you thought about the Zane story. What's your favorite, Kai or Zane? Again, thanks to Echo Killer Shot for making the thumbnail. Can't wait to do more of these. I got Cole next, and then Jay for the final one. And then we're all done with the book. And, uh, you know, I think they're going to be making more Spinjitzu Brothers. Uh, and then, of course, we have the Ninjago 2023 season to watch. Hopefully, it'll be on YouTube so that I can react to it. That'd be kind of cool. Anyway, tell me in the comments down below what you thought. Can't wait to do more of these. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.